what the mayor is about to announce today. We're standing in a building that was constructed in 1838. Uh, now, I don't want to steal the mayor's thunder, uh, and I but think no. we all... No, sir. <laughs> um, but but the, the team that the mayor has selected, and this is really a credit to, to the mayor's leadership and to his vision, uh, is really an institution, not only in Baltimore City, uh, but in our nation. Uh, and they've been operating since 1892. Um, and I won't say what category they are in, but they are the longest continually operating African-American entity in their business. Um, but we really wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for Mayor Jack Young and for his vision to bring in that caliber of community partner uh, to work with our community partners like the Upton Planning Committee. I'm extremely excited to announce that this location will be the new home of the African American newspaper. <laughs> Afro charities and Afro American newspapers are a value institution in the city of Baltimore. Well, the Afro has touched so many lives and steadied this nation in many ways throughout the dawn of the civil rights era and beyond. Its impact on African American in particular and Americans in general is immeasurable. The Afro itself is a rarity. In 1868, 30 years after this building was constructed, my great-grandfather, John Henry Murphy Sr., married my great-grandmother, Martha Howard Murphy. And as the family story goes, and depends on who's telling the story, the men in the family say that Martha loaned $200 to my great-grandfather to purchase the Afro at, a, at an auction. That's what the men, no, the men in the family say that she gave it. The women, in the, the women in the family say she loaned it. Her father was a wealthy landowner in Montgomery County, in fact, the wealthiest landowner, African-American landowner in the state of Maryland. And he had done well um, taking produce back and forth from Baltimore, from Montgomery County to Baltimore City. His name was Enoch um, George Howard. And when he died, he divided his land up amongst his children and Martha sold her share to her brothers and got a whopping $400 for it and loaned $200 or gave $200 to my great grandfather. He used that money to buy the Afro name. Can you believe it? It was already in existence. He bought the name of the Afro and a printing press at an auction for the $200. The press had been used to print a feed sheet. It advertised feed for sale for cows and pigs or whatever else were going through the streets of Baltimore. And that's what it was used for in partnership uh, with the Reverend um, Alexander of the Sharon Baptist Church, which was then called the Patterson Baptist Church, and Father George Bragg, the rector of the St. James Episcopal Church. Well, they were better preachers than they were printers, and so they sold out their interest to John Henry Murphy. I give you that history just to say that we started here in Upton. And we are thrilled to be returning to our old West Baltimore roots. It is only fitting to have the Afro newspaper return to the Upton community. They have deep roots in the community and are the authority on black culture in the Baltimore metropolitan area and beyond. We look forward to having their headquarters on this sacred ground, and we say welcome home. All right.